Welcome patrons to a very unique special bonus edition of the Metal Injection Livecast. We are here uh, for a video edition of the uh, uh, bonus Patreon episode. It's Rob here with Sid. Hello. Noah. <laughs> I was holding in a cough. Uh -oh. Nice. Darren. God. Mark safe from Corona. And uh, our very special guest for the first time on video, we have the very famous or perhaps infamous Lonnie. Yeah. Hey. Yay. Hello. Welcome, Lonnie. Thank but since Noah's coughing, she's not really near wherever I am on this grid, right? We'll move. We uh, have her well, actually, I think apart. you're right above me, aren't you? Isn't he uh, right here? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> so then I'm near everyone. Yes. That's off. Who's Ann B. Davis in this? Uh, when, when she was she in the middle, she? She, I no. forget. the center square. Yeah. She was? So then it's Lonnie. I think, yeah, great. Right? Nobody gets that. <laughs> that, that listen, yeah, we yeah. referenced Joe Franklin on this show. Yeah, 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 yeah. All but bets are off. The, everyone knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> now they do, thanks to us. Every Jew over 65 knows who Joe Franklin is. <laughs> and that core audience. So we have a very unique... Uh, edition of the show today uh we're not going to be doing a watch along or a round table we're going to be doing the first ever uh metal injection live cast draft we can insert that right no I like it better this way. Yeah, it's better when it's but, in Rob's mouth. There's gonna, yeah, there's there's got to be real music in there when you do that, right? I was gonna say no. the, the 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 first forty minutes of this this episode should be Rob singing the Apoc <laughs> Center film. Yes. Uh, so I mean, the rules are a little unique here. So Sid, why don't you explain them? Wait, right. hang on, hang hang on, hang on. Oh. I thought I thought this was a we were doing a Seder. What's after? Is that not no, true? No, this is this Follow is gonna air in May. Passover will be long gone. But I will uh, be eating latkes during this. Okay, Ooh, perfect. Very nice. Yeah. And there will be at least five questions in this somewhere. Okay. Right. So there are some ground rules. I have them written down here. I will now recite them. Just so can everybody I ask, can I pre ask you a question? Yes. Why is this draft different from all other drafts? <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead. All right. So First rule, you can have one member of a real life band in your band. So if, for instance, Lonnie selects Tom Mariah to be his singer, he can't then also have Carrie King. Only one member of a band per band. Now, if you want to pick two, Noah brought this up right before the draft, and it's a good point. If you want to pick two musicians who did a side project together, that is allowed, but only if they never released a full length album as that side project. So if they did like a, a tour if they did some jam sessions together i know no one likes musicians who do jam sessions mm -hmm. or like they put out like an ep or a single that's fine but if they put out a full length then that is forbidden yeah that rule kind of fucked me up right before we got started <laughs> you shouldn't have asked i would never have known why would yeah. you yeah <laughs> what there, there, right, now, there could, i could do that unknowingly or one of us can yeah. do that but whatever you know we're working on the honor system we yeah because the truth is, you would have never known this overlap, which yeah. I'll reveal at the end of the show. Yeah, okay. Fuck that. I'm going to fact check all your motherfucking things. <laughs> <It's common. laughs> well, advice. I'm the honest one. You don't have to check me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Next rule is that, for instance, people like James Hatfield, who in their band sing, play guitar, and write the lyrics, um, they can only be selected once. So if Rob takes James to be his vocalist, then none of us can take James to be a guitarist, a lyricist, anything. He's off the board for the whole draft. Now, that being said, you do get every, like when you draft a musician, you get everything they have to offer. So even though you can't have James be your singer and your guitarist, if he's your singer, he can also play guitar in your band. He can be the rhythm guitarist. He can help with lyrics you could do stage banter, whatever. Just everything that they offer in life, they offer to your band, even though you're only picking them for one spot. Um, next rule is we can only select musicians that are currently alive. And that is a very sketchy proposition given the current state of the country. But <sighs> as of the day we are recording, they have to be alive. Healthy 
we leave uh, uh, up to debate, but alive for sure. Now, while we can only select living musicians, we are getting them in their prime. So like, for instance, if you want to pick a musician who might be suffering from Parkinson's disease in his old age, or maybe a musician who is a lot more politically problematic now than he was back in the day, you're not getting that version of them. You're getting them at their best, whatever you deem that to be. And you could say, like, I'm picking this guy, but I'm picking, like, this era version. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was the uh, it was yeah. them in their prime. I thought now. Yes. That changes yeah. things in a little prime. for me. Yeah. Uh, Reshuffle like your them, draft right? board, Rob. Yeah. This, yeah, this project gave me so much anxiety. I love it. I love it. And last rule, or no, well, two more rules. Um, the, you could pick musicians from any genre of music. But we are drafting a rock band, hard rock, metal, punk, whatever. It has to be within the rock umbrella. So if somebody picks Beyonce to be their vocalist, sure, but she's singing rock songs. She's not singing like R&B pop. So you have to factor that in. And lastly, trades are not only allowed, but they are encouraged. If anybody wants to trade spots in any round to get move, to move down in one round, to move up in another, whatever, go for it. I mean, there's no guarantee that the person you're offering to accepts. I know this very well. I already tried with uh, Lonnie and Darren before we started and was shot down pretty much. Wow. But it, yeah. I, I like my position. Wait. Although, Sid, yeah. I, I, I'm rethinking it. I want to maybe trade up to select your cat who's looking out the window. Oh, yeah. Ziggy. <laughs> yeah, he, I had to leave the window crack open because there's always birds here. And he, like, lunges at the window to get them and then falls over. So, Wait, yeah, are animals over. on the table? Can we draft animals then? You can, you can um, select the vocalist of Hate Week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, do like the For Muppets Canada. count? They had a band, right? Oh, or so like the, Josie. So the they don't have bands. to. They don't have to be real then. No, they do have to be real. Have yes, to be living people. Yes. What about? Let me throw something okay. at you. Can you choose a fictional uh, character who's played by a real person who has put out music, like say Spinal Tap? Not that I'm going that way. I'm just curious. But you're drafting the the real person, okay. not the character. I, I can't draft Nigel Tufnell. Yeah, but it, it was he was played by Christopher Guest, right? Yeah. And Christopher Guest did play those songs, right? I don't so know. you're getting yes. you're getting Christopher Guest. Okay. That I don't fair? know that he played every single song. Did he? I so, believe so. Did I all, believe they played all? Did their all songs. of them play all their songs? Okay. Yeah. I have a question also. Um, are we allowed to draft women? Do they count? <laughs> of course, <I'm>, Sid. <laughs> I was going to let Noah decide, but if she says, of course not, then I guess that's it. No women. There's no place for women in metal. Duh. Okay. Well, there it's is a place in the crowd <laughs> or on their knees. Am I right, gentlemen? High five. You mean in the kitchen. <laughs> what are you I drinking, mean, Rob? Are you just drinking like a tall glass of <laughs> I'm drinking an Americano with some, some creme. I, uh, I I have always said that this is not a metal podcast, and the fact that Noah is on it just proves that. Yeah. <laughs> I right. will say, speaking of that, the one like sad thing about this, we always get these new listeners who are like, oh, when are they going to talk about music already? Well, finally, we're doing a show where all we're going to do is talk about music, but it's only for the patrons. Mm -hmm. So the new <laughs> listeners will never hear it. So, yeah. Shooting ourselves in the foot, but I think or it's they will hear it if they pony up some motherfucking yeah, money. Yeah, exactly. This is how you draw them in. So. Yeah. All yeah, right. They really so, want it. I think, with all that being said, unless there are any more questions, comments, we can get started with the actual draft. Is everybody ready? I'm ready. All right. Round one. We will each select a vocalist for our band, and Rob, you are on the board with the first pick. Well, this was, uh, you know, getting the first pick, first draft, first round. Uh, is very exciting, but also very challenging because I have I can literally choose anyone I want, and there's no restrictions. And so I started thinking about who are vocalists that I think are really good, uh, and it I kind of narr narrowed it down to uh, for the longest time I thought my pick was going to be Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Because mm -hmm. he has very good range. He can do singing. He can do screaming. He can do growling. His voice is incredible. Uh, but then I remembered I am a big Mike Patton fan. And uh, uh, that uh -huh. guy has way more range than uh, 
than Corey Taylor and way more uh, exciting and could basically do any genre. But then when Sid said that you could pick an artist in their prime, it made me think, do I want to recruit James Hetfield then? But I feel that Mike Patton has more range than James Hetfield and could it could be a little more creative and more fun with this. So I'm my number one pick first round, number one pick, Mike Patton. Oh. Not alone. And we're not alone. That's my, Mike I was Patton. afraid you might pull a Sam Bowie, you know, and uh, <laughs> pass over Michael Jordan. But that's a good I, pick. I, I was yeah. also considering Serge Tankian, but Mike Patton is like the, yeah. the higher end Serge Tankian. Serge Tankian is on my depth choice as well. And Mike Patton was on mine. And I did not think you would be stealing one of my picks, but it makes sense. And that's a great pick. I, I don't want to lose you. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Sid, you're already scratching things out on your Yeah, seriously. I really am. There All is right. a real list. I have a go list with too. I, just, I did it digitally. My list is up here. Yeah. I, 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 I wrote it down. Um, because I always, I forget, I'm very forgetful. So I just like, I'd forget my number one choice for something and then kick myself later, even though there's actually no consequences. All right. So I'm between three people now and I think I, and I had them prioritized and I think I'm going to go with the person I had ranked third over the top two, just because I think he's not as famous, but I just like his voice a little bit, even though I do not know how to pronounce his last name correctly, but he is the lead singer of the band Refused. I am taking him in his late 90s, early 2000s prime. His name is Dennis Lykson. Is that Rob? Do you know how to pronounce his name properly? Is that it? Dennis Lykson? Lykson? That's who I'm taking. Very political. Their bands are like super communist, which Mm. as we go will make more sense for what I'm doing. But he just, his screams are good. His singing's good. He was in a band called, what was it? Lonnie, do you remember the, the... band he was in after refused the new noise conspiracy or what was it called it, international Some, noise conspiracy. international noise conspiracy yeah. which was more like a garage rock kind of groovier band in his vocals and that were great so he's also runs the gamut but in more like he's maybe like the punk rock mike Patton. so that is my selection and uh next pick noah vocalist for noah okay so uh i had a really hard time with this because I like such a variety of music that it's hard to find an artist that can kind of like encompass all the styles that I like. And the way that I built this band was based on the drummer. Like I have a very specific drummer that I want in my band and I wanted to make sure that the musicians around him kind of like match his style. So at first I wanted to pick Ray Adler from uh, Fate's Warning just because he's Got a great range. I just love his voice. He has a lot of experience. Um, but I just didn't think he was strong enough to go with, with with my drummer of choice that hopefully none of you will pick ahead of me. Um, so actually, I picked Snake from Voivod, and I'll take him from the Killing Technology era just because I think like that is a quintessential album. We have like all this great... Um, you know, it's like progressive, but like a little bit of punk, gr- like grunge, hardcore, like all combined in one album. And I think he's going to work really well with the rest of the band picks. Very nice. So, so Snake from Boy I, I just want to say, based on the people you were thinking about, Noah, I don't think you have a lot of competition for your picks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone had Fate's Warning on their list. <laughs> you know, well, it was just... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just telling Sid before we started this, like, I really hope, and I think it would spice it up more if people were in direct competition for picks. And I was like, ah, maybe that's not going to happen because we all, other than Sid and Lonnie being pretty close musically, like, none of us have similar styles. And then the very first pick was someone that got snatched away from Sid, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But also, like, I'm trying not to build this band on my preferences and also with the with the rule that came in before we started. Like, all the bands I listen to, there's a lot of overlap and side projects, so I kept running into that hurdle. I just wanted guys that are not really associated with each other but still, you know, but still sound cool together. I don't know. And, you know, I'd want to go, like, leave my house and see them during COVID-19. It has to be that good. Risking it all. 
I feel like Noah's side project issue is like so obscure. It's kind of like against what the the spirit of the rule. Well, that's why yeah. it's, I if you've put out a full length together, then that's like a real project. That's not just a little uh, mewling on the side. So that was my cutoff. I you're that just put out a you're, full you're a very benevolent, benevolent lead I try. commissioner. I try. I try. Cut the baby right in half. All right, Lonnie, you're up for your vote. Uh, when we first started to talk about this, when Sid first like told me about this idea, um, I I thought it was go that like dead people would be included, um, and then when they weren't, I realized how many like current the uh, singers, front people, whatever. Um, I just didn't really care about as much or think we're going to be as good as people who are dead. So I really was like, nope, not that person. Nope, not that person. Nope, not that person. And from what I was left with, I was kind of like, eh, uh, I don't know. Um, but I think I've landed on, and this is going to be totally on, my, like this group that I pick will totally be on my preferences or what I think like could be an interesting idea. Um, but, but my singer is, uh, is going to be Eddie better. Okay. Oh. He sings for Pearl Jam. <laughs> he may be in some other side project bands or something that I don't really know about, but I don't think so. I think he just has a solo stuff. Um, so who if we had to take, if you were, uh, if, if dead people were allowed. Freddie Mercury. Mm. Oh, like I was like Freddie Mercury, Kurt Cobain, Billy Joel, <laughs> uh, uh, well, so I, I don't think that's funny. I fucking others. love Billy Joel. Yeah, no, it's he's funny dead? because he's not dead. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. For me, my first. I thought Lonnie was just saying like the type of people he was considering. Uh, <laughs> I, I was thinking Lane yeah. Staley initially, uh, mm. or like Chris Cornell. Uh, uh, Chris Cornell, I was. Yeah, Chris was, Cornell is a good one for sure. Yeah, oh, when you go oh, into like that grunge era, like there's a lot of them are dead. Um, but, but Eddie better not. So, uh, but, and, and if, and if we're picking like when, I don't really think it matters for him, but I guess like after the first three records came out, kind of Eddie better. When, when he wrote, um, uh, he, uh, pro, uh, pro choice on his, on his, on his, he, well, oh, that, that was, was the like the very record. beginning. That was like the unplugged from the first record, but, uh, like even the fighting ticket master, Eddie better. I'm, I'm fine with that. Which he was right. He was ahead yeah. of his time on that. Yeah. He was always right and always ahead of his time. <laughs> so let, let's do a recap, Sid. Who, who do we have in the round one? Rob oh, has taken... Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Am now. I not here? What is he, Chop Liver? He's, he's used to there only being four of you. That's yeah. Well, that's true. You yeah. Yeah. took a Darren seat? It, it? it's, a, it's a math issue. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Rob. I forgot your issues. Uh, hey, Darren, you're up. So I already mentioned that I was uh, leading Surge Tankion uh, in the beginning. I also did consider Chris Cornell. That was before you gave us the the uh, the uh, dead person rules, so he was out. Uh, and then another guy that I was considering was, uh, and I'm trying to balance this between things that I like and things that I think would be marketable. Uh, people who would get along, people who would make interesting music and like matching diverse styles that I think would sound together. So um, another guy I had in mind was Matt Bellamy. Uh, mm. I don't know if any of you guys mentioned him uh, from Muse. Uh, he also has the benefit of being able to play keyboards, which if we're doing a, yeah. a keyboard situation, we can mix uh I thought about talent. him too, yeah. He's really yeah, good. Yeah, I did as well. Uh, but I actually wound up convincing myself to go a completely different way. Uh, and it came down to two people who I think are fabulous vocalists who uh, both can handle rock are not primarily known as rock vocalists. I think would be good even in a hard rock or like sort of rock metal band. Uh, one of them was Fiona Apple. Ooh. Oh, I actually I'm, it's, it's like a 5149 between her and Lady Gaga. Oh, wow. And I'm going That's with Lady Gaga. Wow. Oh, right. wow, very nice. Yeah, That's when awesome. Sid was saying uh, you could pick anyone from any genre, but they have to uh, sing metal, Lady Gaga was also the first one that came into my head uh, with that, but I, I'm a big Mike Patton fan. So, How about Mike I'm Patton hoping... and Lady Gaga collaborate? He's a big Lady Gaga fan. Let's get that going. Sid, call him up. You... I'll yeah, do it. I'll text him. <laughs> so let's do a recap. Who, who are All our right. vocalists? 
Rob got Mike Patton off the top, which threw multiple other people's draft boards into disarray right away, which is always what you want to do. I took Dennis Lykson from Refused and International Noise Conspiracy. Noah took Snake from Voivod, who we will all take on faith that is that that's an actual person. Oh, I, 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 that's an actual person. I I can confirm. Uh, Lonnie took Eddie Vedder, and Darren took Lady Gaga, which I think is an awesome pick. And Sid, I, I am going to. I'm first for guitars, correct? Yes, you are. I'm going to offer you a trade. Ooh. Do you have the first? Oh, you don't have the drum. first drum pick. He does. I do I, have the first drum pick. You do? Okay. Uh, I will trade my first my first uh, guitar pick for your first drum pick. You know, I sort of put all my eggs into the drummer basket, so that's like the one pick that I don't really feel comfortable trading. Oh, really? And it kills me to turn down a trade, but I have a lot of eggs in that uh, basket, as as will be seen when I make that pick. So I'm going to have to turn you down. I'm sorry. Oh. All right, that's fair. Because I, I just know that I'm picking a guitarist that no one here is going to pick, except mm. maybe Noah. But I don't think so either. So maybe trade somebody... with Noah. Noah has uh, the second your... pick in the drummer round. Oh, do you? Do you want the? Uh, you want I am trade? not what trading is... with you. Wait. My whole Wait. band is drummer. Drummer was drummer. most important. Yeah. Okay. Drummer fair. was most important. Oh, that's part. right. And I, I can't. I'm not... I can't risk it. I'm not 100% sure. Sh- I really don't think anyone's going to pick my drummer, but I just wanted to be safe because I really feel like this is the backbone to my band. So. Uh, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to take my guitarist pick and I'm going to pick Nita Strauss. Oh. oh. And could you spell that and tell me who that is? She's the, currently the uh, the guitarist for Alice Cooper. Okay. And she's also done her own solo work and she's been in a bunch of other bands, sort of. As a very like power power session person, I would say. Nita is the first name. N I T A. Yeah, Strauss. Okay. Didn't we have her on the show? Or did I just have her on Squared no, Circle? I think on metal. In- I thought metal injection. Like you interviewed her now. I mean, I definitely had her on Squared Circle Pit, but for some reason, I thought she might have called in our podcast as well. <coughs> All right, uh, Lonnie, you were up next. Uh. Mm. Mm, there's good ones. There's a couple of good ones. I really didn't want such a high pick on this one. But let's see. I do have a list also. It is on my phone, so hang on. Yeah, you know what? Just give me Slash. God damn it. Just give that me was... Slash. Oh, wow. Give me like right. Appetite Slash. Can't go wrong with Slash. Yeah. He's pretty great. God so, damn it. Yeah. First. Wait, Sid, why would you take Slash? You don't you you don't like guitar solos? <laughs> well, his are like the only ones I do like. Oh that's man. why he's so well, good. you should come see my band. <laughs> I think I will. The songs yeah. are all about hats. God damn it. <laughs> exactly. Like is it uh, it's it's overly obvious now that I was gonna take Slash with this hat. I was just glad you didn't Darren. So thank you for taking the person in here. Lonnie's band is called Men with Hats. We're supposed to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in your real life band, not the band you're. Oh with. yeah, that's true. Yes, not true. All right. Um, Did you're up? Yeah, this is tough. This is tough. This is tough. <sighs> Fuck. Lonnie Did fucked I... you. Rob fucked you. Seriously. Yeah. I Damn. really was hoping for Slash. Feels good. We're definitely gonna win money on this. <laughs> All right, you know what? Um, given that we're getting them in their prime, I'm going to go with Tom Morello. I'm going to take Tom Morello. Those first two Rage albums, like, nobody sounded like that as a guitar player to the point that they had to put in the liner notes that, no, that's really us playing all the instruments. It's not like a computer or a synth or anything else. It's us actually making these sounds. That's how, like, mind-blowing his shit was then. And, you know, he's very outspoken publicly, so is like the the aura and the you know social media presence of the band he's going to get people out i mean you saw how expensive rage against the machine tickets were for their tour that might not happen now so i think we're, we're going to do good on all levels and he works very well with my lead singer they i think are very politically aligned so i don't think there's going to be any beef in there so tom morello is my pick it's a good and pick. now for some reason, I didn't even have him on my list. I don't know why. I just like maybe forgot about him or something. Yeah. Noah, you're up. Okay. 
So this is kind of uh, where I got fucked right before we started because I really oh. wanted, I really wanted Jeff Loomis uh, yeah. as my guitar player, but uh, he had a side project with one of my uh, other uh, musicians, which none of the four of us ever heard of. You yeah, if you, right just, if you just if you would have just kept <laughs> Noah, can you just say they didn't? They put out a seven inch and it's fine. Like it, like. No, it's fine with seven. Do we inches. know they put out? Do, do we know they put out a full length record? Listen, the people who listen, who are going to be listening to this show, some of them have a musical taste like I have, and they would know. And I'm not going to lie to anybody. Wow. So, uh, but it actually made me think because, um, you know, so I had to cross Jeff Loomis out. Unfortunately, I won't be able to work with him this time around, but. Uh, I wanted a guitar player that would work well with my bass player, because that's a very important combination. And um, someone who could be cool enough to accompany Snake and his style. And I thought uh, I thought that Dave Davidson has oh. enough experience and knowledge to uh, fit this band pretty well. Good, uh, good technique good riffage, and uh, knows music theory. And you've actually met him. And and he has a cool personality, so he'll be able to hang yep. with the rest of the band. No drama. Is that the first official live cast alumni to be selected? I think so, right? Yeah. Other well, than the time Gaga. we had Tom Morello. <laughs> oh, Rob. Yes. Uh, Speaking of oh, Rob, Rob, it's your pick. It is my pick. And uh, I want to mention how uh, I can't believe I'm getting this pick because I just assumed he would be taken. So I, my initial, when I saw the, the, the round lineup, I was, I was like, oh, well, I'm last. So everyone's going to pick these guys. So I'm going to go with Scott Ian because he... Oh, yeah. He's an excellent rhythm guitar. Wait, that's not my pick. That's not my pick. No. <laughs> oh, okay. He was uh, on my you, list. That was, that that's was who go- you were going to settle for. That's who I was going to settle for because mm. he is an, uh, like, I really truly realized how great a guitar player Scott Ian is on that Brian Posehn album that just came out, Grandpa mm-hmm. Metal, because. Just, you know, I was listening, I was tuning into the album for the jokes and the, the bits, but I'm just like, holy shit, these are like such great, amazing, like I was blown away by the rhythm riffs. Not, I mean, the solos are great too, those are all guest solos, but just the rhythm guitar, and it really cemented to me that like, oh yeah, Scott Ian's a fucking, a fucking man, like b- besides Anthrax, like all those S.O.D. albums, uh, and, but then also I realized like, uh, it's, Within the boundaries of, of not being allowed, because Scott Ian has played with uh, Mike Patton for these Mr. Bungle reunion shows, and they're re-recording the Bungle demo. But I think I would have passed. But regardless, if you're talking amazing rhythm guitar players... Uh, well, no, are, this is just a guitarist. This is there. We are only selecting one guitarist. I understand. I understand. But I think the rhythm is more important than the, uh, than the lead. It's uh, going to get you. Uh, as much, and this guy can do some leads himself, and uh, you guys may have heard of him. Uh, his name is James Hetfield. Uh, mm-hmm. How did nobody pick James Hetfield? Master of Puppets era James Hetfield, and also when Sid said you can pick any era of a guitarist, like James Hetfield. Now, I mean, still like all the riffs on the last album, they were very good. Uh, but I mean, Master of Puppets, Master of Puppets, uh, James Hetfield, and then like that 1990 era Mike Patton. Like they could, they could have yeah, made some cool. ridiculous music together. So, well, well if I, oh, sit, sorry, sorry, go ahead, no. Gotcha. Well, um, Rob was saying, uh, how could you not have picked James Hetfield? There is another category in this lineup that Sid kind of uh, threw in there that s- spun me for a loop, and James Hetfield was. On, on my list for that. So thank you. Now I have to cross him off. Oh, for, oh I that's, see. For lyricist, I'm assuming. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Of the three things that he does in Metallica, like to me, playing guitar is like the lead, the thing he's the least virtuoso at, you know? Yeah, not that, exactly. Not that he's bad at it, 
but mm-hmm. I feel like that would be the last time of the three, the less I would think of them. Totally. But just to think now, Rob's got Mike Patton singing and God. then James Hadfield doing backing vocals. That's hard to beat. Ridiculous. Yeah. You're having a good draft. Thank Rob's you. killing it. And James can right. absolutely help with lyrics. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so let's recap there. Darren had the first pick. He took Anita Strauss. Uh, Lonnie took Slash, broke my heart with his second pick. I took Tom Morello uh, because also he's another person I've never seen without a hat on. Slash too, both of them. There to see the hat club. Wicked um, hat on. <laughs> no, I took Dave Davidson, friend of the show. And Rob snuck in and took James Hetfield. So there we go. That, that's the guitarist round. And now... We are leading off the drum around. I have the first pick, which I was not willing to trade. Um, and I am taking someone who you could consider a quintuple threat of oh. things he brings to the table. I'm taking Dave Grohl. Ah. Taking ah. Nirvana era Dave Grohl. This man is a great drummer, even though he doesn't do it that much anymore. He's a great drummer. He's going to be great at backing vocals. If you need him to put, like do some rhythm guitar for a song, he can do that with a plum. Stage banter, you put a mic by his drum kit, he's going to be hilarious. Um, you need a documentary done about your band? We all saw Sonic Highways on HBO. That shit was fantastic, and he produced that. You need and, some barbecue? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was about to say. The dude oh, is a sorry. fucking great... No, that's fine. He's a great barbecue cook. I mean, what can this guy not do? It's everything, and he's my drummer, so that's my pick, Dave Grohl. Great pick. Oh, nice. Great, great pick, and definitely was someone on my list. Did anyone just get clipped by Sid picking Dave Grohl? I think we all knew that that was probably going to be first. Yeah. Like, I would definitely think Dave Grohl would be first. That's how I felt. Like The way I felt about Grohl, I was like, oh, it's like what I was saying about James Hetfield. Like, no way he'll be available by the time I want him. Noah's so upset she ran away. <laughs> <laughs> she had Sorry, I had to... I had to step away because Bruno, it's his uh, dinner time. We started okay. a little bit oh. late. And he's just like here whining, and I can't tell if it's coming over the microphone. Oh, it was not. Here. <laughs> okay. So uh, you're up, Noah. It's your pick for a drummer. Uh, okay. Well, um, while I was thinking about the draft, uh, the the this guy I think is the holy grail, and I think this is really what's gonna make this band, uh, I guess, like more mainstream and uh, still cool. <laughs> Uh, so I pick Richard Christie oh, to be yeah. my drummer, and I pick him in the char- charred walls of the damn era because uh, he's still a phenomenal drummer. Uh, he has all the fans from uh, his days in death and iced earth. Uh, he writes for Decibel Magazine. He's on uh, a national platform uh, that a lot of obs- obsessive fans uh, are listening to the show is called Howard Stern Show, and he's just cool. He's just a cool guy, always upbeat and positive, and I think he would bring a really good energy to the band. And also another uh, live cast alumnus. Yeah, you got oh, two yeah. of them now. Okay, I, I didn't even think of that. I forgot that he was on our show. Very good, Darren. Your turn. Okay, so clearly, if I was going to make a purely uh, uh, a band based on just technical ability, I would have gone with uh, Frank Godla. That's, that's what I was saying. The most accomplished uh, drummer in the history of, of rock. If your band needs a website, he knows a guy. <laughs> if I, if he knows I everybody. Was, well, yeah, it's a built-in No, I mean, he knows rock. Um, but if I was making my own personal favorite band, I would have gone with my number one favorite drummer of all time, Dave Lombardo. Uh, but I didn't. I'm trying to. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the all the criteria together, uh, like marketability, ability to play uh, pop, or rock, pop rock, metal, any kind of anything that falls under the banner of rock. Versatile, versatile musicians, and I'm also clearly going for a theme here. So I picked Sheila E. Ooh, oh, nice. This is awesome. That's my nice. Choice. I don't know what that theme What's is. What's the theme? Is it just non-metal well, musician? I don't know. You'll understand. see when it comes. When it comes <laughs> I feel like it's pretty cool. ladies. Yeah. I mean, it's women. What? Huh? 
<laughs> it's the question that we asked at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Robert, uh, you are up. He still doesn't get it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, he doesn't see gender. Well, uh, this one w- was difficult for me. I would have loved to pick Dave Lombardo, but he is already in a band, with, in multiple bands with Mike Patton. So uh, that wouldn't work for me. Uh, so it's really down to a few people for me. Uh, I have a lot of favorite drummers, but it, just in terms of the type of band I'm doing, uh, <clears throat> it would be between uh, Bill, uh, not Bill Ward, uh, although that would be a good pick, Bron Daler of Mastodon, the drummer of Mastodon, and uh, Gojira drummer Mario Duplantier. Uh, and I'm just, I, I'm trying to decide which of their styles would work best in this band. And I'm leaning a little more towards Mario because he has Mario because he has that, uh, that crunch that I enjoy. So I'm picking Gojira drummer Mario Duplantier. Did you, did, okay. no, uh, Lonnie, did he scoop you there? What? <laughs> um, you had Phil Plantier on your list. Lonnie didn't even know <laughs> I was every speaking year. in English. Um, I wasn't listening. So, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I knew Dave Grohl would get taken. And after Dave Grohl, I was kind of like, do I even know a drummer's name? I'm just the guy who listens to music. Like, I don't, <laughs> what do I care about this? Um, and when you said like quadruple threat, I was like, oh man, I think that's probably going to be the person who's my second choice. And I'm, I'm kind of going against two people, but I don't think, um, that it would be right here to choose Phil Collins. Although I think that would be really kind of fun. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going more for, I think like versatility speed. He does a couple of other things. I think he'd be able to to be like slot right in there with whoever and it's uh bill stevenson Mm. uh, drummer of the descendants black flag probably like 12 other bands he's a producer he writes songs um just think that he's probably pretty easy to slot in there that's i was definitely he would have been my second choice yeah like fast quintessential punk rock drummer not that these guys are gonna play punk rock because he's got to play with slash and uh and Eddie yeah. Vedder, but like they can kind of do anything. Like they like that stuff too. And doesn't he produce that albums? What was that? Was Ziggy's that a... like picking at stuff on the wall. Oh, okay. But I so can't get up to Ziggy. Really sit there and imitate her. <laughs> Him. Cut it out. Right. Is she Sorry. clapping at you? He. 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 He's Sorry. I don't see girls. cat gender. That's true. <laughs> Literally. I feel like picking Phil um. Collins is like picking a guy who had like second base eligibility last year that has it now but he's going to play center field yep so you get to stick him at second base even get though those extra really stats there. he has a pretty distinctive sound though sure it's draw, so not a bad pick at all yeah yeah um but i didn't do it bill stevens was that, I'm the, I was the last pick yes, there. Yes. Okay. So I'm just trying to relate way. it. I'm trying to relate it to a sports draft in some way. Right. 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 Get that bonus position eligibility. Get those better stats. Yeah, you did a really great job. So yeah, first pick was me. I took Dave Grohl. Uh, then Noah took Richard Christie, friend of the show. Darren took Sheila E. Rob took Mario Duplantier, and Lonnie <laughs> took Bill Stevenson. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, Ziggy's. I want the sixth the pick in the third round. Ziggy picks. <laughs> All right, now no we're problem. doing bassist, and Noah picks first. Okay. Um. All right, this was kind of hard, mm-hmm. but um, I originally wanted uh Steve DiGiorgio from Testament, but he has COVID nineteen, so. <laughs> Uh, he needs to stay at home and recover from that. Yeah. And then I thought, you know, like, who's a cool bassist, uh, could keep up with Dave, has uh, old school experience to keep up with Snake and um, and and Richard, I guess. Uh, and I thought of Alex Webster from Cannibal oh, Corpse. Oh, great pick. Um, and I'd like to take list. him from uh, Blotted Science, which is like one of his side projects that's really like technical 
and cool sounding. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I think I think that would work well. Say his name again, please. Uh, a one Alex Webster. Alex Webster. All right. Don't put the one. In. But only the blotted science version. That's mm. what Noah said. Yeah. Well, I mean, the right. Blotted science the era. Yeah. Yeah. The blot. That's what I mean. From, you should check out blotted science. We all it's know. Good. It's like machine. yeah. yeah. Right. Without, yeah. Without I just wanted to make sure it was clear when he was writing this down that it was that because others could just be. I mean, just suck. So we want right. You would sure want the cannibal right corpse era. era, Alex Webster. That would be weird. No, no, I still. I want. She would, but not. But this is like ten percent better. I was so I was gonna go two ways with this. I was either gonna go in more in like death metal style, like harder, and then like marketing is a part of this. So then I kind of like shied away from that. So uh, if I was going towards that direction, I would have picked Cannibal Corpse era. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't go well with the rest of my picks. So I'll pick Blotted Science. Very good, Rob. It's your turn. Uh, well, I mean, if I could have could have picked uh, bassists who are no longer with us, uh, Cliff Burton would be at the very top of the list. That would be so cool. Uh, you couldn't I would, I, hold on. I would have obviously okay. not picked James Hetfield. Then I would have okay. gone with uh, Scott Ian because I feel that Cliff uh, would be the stronger contender here. But just going on the type of vibe I'm going for, uh, I think it would be really cool to have Les Claypool play bass in my band of a little band called Primus and of course him and James are buddies and him and Mike are absolutely buddies so it kind of oh Lonnie's heard of the band that's good so <laughs> Les Claypool is my pick oh you're having an excellent draft thank yeah. you yeah that is great I mean if I had number one pick I pick next right yeah if I had number one pick out of any body i would pick less playful so i think that's that's awesome um i'll keep this kind of uh punk rock uh bassist and and drummer battery going and go with matt freeman from rancid mm -hmm. um like i think undoubtedly the best punk rock bass player um just really memorable stuff um better than mike kind Durant? Of Yes, for sure. If you can put up with better than yeah any of those guys. If you can put up with like Tim Armstrong, I'm sure you can put up with anybody. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Matt Freeman. We will not let him sing. No, not even one song. We will song? not let him sing at all. No, not no. even a oi, oi, oi. It's a disaster. He's like really gravelly and <laughs> oi, oi. it's not good. Can he sing a song live if Eddie Vedder has to take a shit? Uh, no, Slash will bring in his snake pit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opening act. You picked Wait, a guitarist do, who comes with his own opening act. Do we need to look up and see if any of these other guys were in Slash's snake pit? <laughs> they, they put out a studio release. I don't know who's numerous. on that thing. I don't think, I think you're safe so far. So okay. far, so good with that. All right, great. Well, I'm pretty much done because we don't have another band member. We just have a lyricist. Correct. Yeah. But it's a lyricist from a band. Maybe. What are you going to pick, like, Thomas Pynchon? Well, it's a lyricist who can... <laughs> Did you hack my phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. He's, just... He's been friends with you for way too long. It's true. Gosh. Darren, you're up. Okay. Uh, well, relating it back to sports drafts again, I would say that Bassist is probably the, the, the most shallow uh, category. It's like, you know, in baseball, there's like... For there's years, a big there drop-off, like, I feel, though, right. too. It was Buster Posey and then basically a few good guys and everyone else is trash or unmemorable, and you just need to fill your yeah. roster out. Uh, and also, because I'm clearly going uh, with a theme here, uh, I am going to pick a bassist of a band... I real she's not in a band anymore. Uh, I think t for t 20 years now. Uh, but I'm going to go with uh, White Zombie here as Sean. Nice. And so, oh. Uh, who I really loved. Uh, they were very groovy, uh, very um, bassy uh, rock metal band, I would say, on that end of the spectrum at least. Mm -hmm. uh, very talented. Also had a crush on her back then 
Uh, and yeah, that's my pick. And she, I don't even think she has a. She also has a side project now that I want. White Zombie Era, Sean. She was prominently featured in the uh, Michael Alago documentary. Is that yeah, what like right. popped her back into your mind? No, they're very good no, friends. No. She's friends with I Dave feel Hill, like too. Darren is just taking this band as like a way to get girls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Already sent feelers out. Uh, <laughs> You're like the Kim Fowley, like the the man behind the scenes pulling the strings <laughs> of the female musicians. I'm more I like Anvil, I would say. <laughs> I'm close to that. Battle. All right. I am very glad that my guy wasn't taken. I feel like Lonnie would have been the only one to consider taking this guy. And I, I can't let this draft go without taking one person from my favorite band in the world by far, Fugazi. I'm taking Joe Lally, the bassist of Fugazi. He is one of like the grooviest bassists in like the punk post hardcore genre. He could do all the punk and post hardcore stuff, but he also like has a lot of dub and reggae influence and like the DC go, go music influence. So he could pretty much do any kind of bass playing. And it's not just like falls in the background. You don't notice it. You notice his bass line. Sometimes they're very good. He's even done like some vo lead vocals on some of their songs. So he could contribute a little bit of that. And otherwise, like from watching their documentary, he doesn't talk a lot. He just sort of sits in the back and plays his bass. So he's not going to annoy anybody. He's not going to be like a nudnik in the tour bus making everybody hate him. He's just going to keep his mouth shut. He's going to practice bass. No problems. And he's in Fugazi. So Joel Alley is my pick. Sid, thank well, you plus for uh, keeping the live cast streak of at least one Yiddish word going. Was, <laughs> yeah. We're getting near the end. I was a little worried. We know Sid's got to make sure that his band has some dub flavor. It's true. Because he's such a giant fan of that. So It's groovy. For bass, it's important. That's like the only instrument where I would care about that influence is bass. And so I'm very glad. So let's go over that. Noah took Alex Webster from which band again? Blotted Science. <laughs> Blotted Science. Cannibal Corpse. How do you not remember that? I just learned that they existed today, yeah. so it's going to take me a few repetitions. No, I'm glad you asked. I didn't remember Thanks. either. Rob <laughs> took Les Claypool, continuing his like superstar fucking overqualified lineup. Uh, Lonnie took Matt Freeman or Rancid. Darren took Sean Isolt from White Zombie, and I took Joe Lally of Fugazi. And now we are kicking off the last round. It's the lyricist round, and Lonnie has the first pick. All right. This is the only one where I can like exact some control because I have the first pick, so I know that like someone's not going to take Dave Grohl and someone's not going to take Les Claypool, um, Ray Adler. So yeah, or that guy. But um, uh, so I have Eddie Vedder, I have Slash, I have Matt Freeman, I have Bill Stevenson. I have a a pretty like serious band. Like those guys know what they're doing. Um, so what I wanted here in a lyricist was someone who was prolific. I want someone who had some hits under their belt, but someone who also like, you know, had some cachet and that, you know, people kind of knew, you know, that like they were writing the song. Um, and also something that I thought would fit well and be fun. So we're going to go with, uh, Al Yankovic. Oh, oh wow. that's awesome. Because that's let's let, let's let Eddie better have some fun. Darren, but would I'm Eddie better sing on. sing a parody or like sing he's, silly he's songs? He's written many, many non parodies. Yeah, it wouldn't have to be That's parodies. true. But he's gonna write some here. Has like, he ever done a Pearl Jam parody? No. Not oh, wow. no. Okay. He's done a Pearl Jam it is part of his polka medley. Mm. Well, Can if you're in the if you're in the the fan club where you get the vinyl sent to you every month. He has done some secret Pearl Jam B-sides. <laughs> For a Lonnie's second, Darren's like, wait, did I miss out on a Weird Al fan club? What the fuck? Lonnie's a much huger Weird Al fan than me. You have the yeah. real street cred. <laughs> uh, that's, that would have clipped me if I was not doing a very specific type mm -hmm. of band. Sure. Right. Oh, yeah, because he's, he's, a, he's a guy. Um, but anyways, I think that would be fun. Yeah, literally. Nice. All right, Darren, you're up. Okay, so I'm going to actually agree with Lonnie on something here. Uh, I want somebody with some cachet as well as a versatile performer who could fill a couple of other roles here. Uh, also can be a keyboardist in a rock band if that becomes necessary. And prolific, definitely prolific. 
And just a dynamic performer in general, my lyricist is Alicia Keys. Interesting. Uh, wow. That's good. It's a good lineup, Darren. Thank you. I try to balance, um, you know, as Rob's strategy is very valid, just assemble a super group, but you can't go wrong with that. I was trying to sort of go um, balance music I like with some superstar power and some maybe lesser known people that whose styles I think would mesh well together. Oh, Noah, okay. do you feel Darren is out uh, feministing you right now by uh, <laughs> having an I'm album? double feministing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't think that picking all women in, in your you know draft Patreon show makes you, you know, like, w w will make me less of a feminist if I don't do it. Jeez, I didn't, by the way. So I'm now the you're saying with, Darren with, is less of a feminist. I'm the, no, I'm <laughs> no, I'm not, it has Are nothing you saying to do he's with virtue it. virtue signaling via draft? No, I'm not saying that anything. Be... Rob is saying it. <laughs> no, Rob, say... Rob is implying that. I want to say me. for the record, <laughs> I am the one with the old female band, and I did not think you were less of a feminist. I'm just yeah, but Rob not... did. Stir Rob made a passive-aggressive comment. <laughs> and that's what you're going to get. Shit. I don't mean any of it. Anyway. <laughs> of course, you're picking on the one woman on this all-male lineup podcast, Rob. <laughs> Where's your feminist hat? Huh. I don't believe in gender. How about that? <laughs> so, <Okay>. uh... <laughs> Construct, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But that's a different podcast. So... Uh, keeping with the all-star theme, <coughs> first I was thinking a little older, like uh, Rob Halford or Bruce Dickinson. But then as I'm building my my band up, I realize like they don't really fit in with the style of these guys. Uh, and uh, it needed to be somebody kind of a little uh, quirkier. Maybe, uh, but also um, interesting. Uh, initially, I thought Trent Reznor, because he is one of my all-time favorite lyricists. I but, figured you'd pick him somewhere, Rob. Uh, but uh, I kind like as I was thinking about it more, uh, just in terms of the theme of the band, I actually want to pick Devin Townsend because he does mm. oh, nice. sillier. Uh, Sillier, he, he could be a little sillier, whereas I think Trent Reznor, uh, who I have the utmost respect for, is a bit more serious. Uh, and I think this band is kind of a little more on the quirky side. And Devin Townsend is one of the quirkiest people in music. And also, he he plays guitar. He play he, he he's uh, you know a less famous Dave Grohl essentially. He's and got also, a podcast. He's got he's a producer. He's an excellent producer. I feel like he would produce the album. That would be really and another cool former too. guest on our show. So my pick is Devin Townsend. Very good. All right, I am up. I was going between two people that are basically like the 80s, 90s version and the modern day version. And I think I'm going to go with the modern day version because for what I'm going for, I need somebody who's more of our current time, of our current political situation, who could speak more to that than that the version from back in the day, like the Reagan era, Clinton era version of it. And I'm wearing his shirt. I'm selecting Jeff Rosenstock. Oh, Lonnie's son. I'm selecting Jeff Rosenstock to be my lyricist. He also plays guitar. He Where? runs a record label. He plays saxophone. He could do a bunch of stuff. Hey, Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my pick is Jeff Rosenstock. It's a good one. Thank you. The other option was Aaron Comet Bus of... Pinhead Gunpowder, mm. Crim Shrine, many other bands. But I think he's he's probably pushing his 50s now. And I, I want somebody, I want to, uh, and I think this would be the youngest person in my band by like quite like a decade or two. So inject a little bit of youth and a little bit of piss and vinegar. A little chutzpah, Darren. <laughs> so yeah, Jeff Rose is stuck in Noah. Those guys are going to have to play a lot of two minute songs. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, <laughs> uh, that lyrics are like the last thing I pay attention to when I listen to a band. Like for me, it's just more about like the instrumentation and how technical it is. So this was a very hard category for me to fill because honestly, like I don't know who the fuck writes the lyrics. <laughs> 
Um, so then I like thought about, okay, well, you know, which, which bands do I, am I really familiar with when it comes to like lyrics and, you know, like, um, James Hetfield was, um, in, he was a strong contender, but since Rob picked him, he's out. Um, and then I'm stuck between two other people and I kind of like talked myself into who I'm going to choose while we were, while we were recording this. And they are uh, Tom Araya from Slayer. I think, uh, you know, he just, I like the the themes that he writes about, you know, like serial oh, killers and all no, that. Do you realize that uh, Carrie King and Jeff Hanneman wrote most of the lyrics in Slayer? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so then he's out. That doesn't mean uh, he can't write stuff, though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Give him a shot. Maybe this is a shot he always wanted. <laughs> he can, he can well, write about he can write about beard grooming and maintenance. <laughs> okay, great. So it's not going to happen in my band. Um, so that eliminates Tom Araya, uh, and uh, then I guess the guy who's going to be writing lyrics for my band is going to be Michael Akerfelt. Oh. And I like him because uh, one he he sings. Plays guitar and he's played bass in the band, so he, he can does keyboards write. Keyboards too, I believe. He does keep, so he can write for. Yeah, but I don't have a keyboard player, so he can write for Alex and Dave and Snake and also um, Dave Davidson growls. Michael Akerfelt sings and growls, so he could write vocal parts for Snake, growls for Dave. Um, he can work with the guitar melodies and stuff like that. I like your band so now. No, could Thanks. you just for the record say what band Michael Ackerfeld is in? Opeth. Okay, very good. Can I just say that he has the probably one of the top five best stage banters? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Anybody that well, I've ever seen. Truly, what like genuinely one of the funniest vocalists yeah. I've ever Straight seen. Straight up, that. like, <laughs> like, like at stand up at times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he and Richard will probably mesh really well, also. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they weren't friends already. Does that disqualify them? What do you say? If they're if these people are <laughs> no. friends. No. That... All right, so that's the last round. Uh, Lonnie took Weird Al to be his lyricist. Darren took Alicia Keys. Rob took friend of the show Devin Townsend. I took Jeff Rosenstock. And Noah finished it up with Michael Ackerfeld. So the draft is complete. How do we all feel right now? I feel really good about uh, my, my team. Yeah, I, I was... Uh... I was questioning it, but I like it. You did really well. I'm pretty happy with mine, too. I think this is definitely a band that I would be excited to listen to if they existed. I think mine could well. be either really, really great or a complete failure. Lonnie, how do you feel about your band? Um, I think it's okay. <laughs> Sid, can we get a recap of the of each of our lives? I think it's pretty good. You want me to read back oh, the whole thing? Okay, sure. Or how about we each re like read our own? Yeah, oh, yeah, that works. No, you want to kick it off? Okay, sure. Uh, so my band uh, is fronted by Snake from Voivod. Dave Davidson of Revocation plays guitar. Alex Webster of uh, Blotted Science and Cannibal Corpse is playing bass. Richard Christie on the drums. And Michael Akerfeld is writing lyrics and producing. Robert? Mike Patton is my vocalist, uh, most famously of Faith No More. Uh, James Hetfield is my guitarist, master of puppets era, James Hetfield. Uh, Les Claypool of Primus is my bassist, any era. Uh, Gojira's Mario Duplantier is my uh, drummer, and I will say uh, from the From Mars to Sirius album era, let's do that. Uh, and then my lyricist is Devin Townsend. Rob, you really picked all these heavy hitters and then like Gojira guys, like the <laughs> Robert, uh, Robert yeah, like, you know, I, I, I they, wanted. They can't uh, all be stars. Well, like yeah, like what I I couldn't think of like a famous drummer that kind of fit their style. So I wasn't still... like not a bad pick. It's just it's interesting. It's like I feel like that dynamic. Like how would he? get along with the with these superstars i feel right. like he's probably like the glue guy like on a basketball team he's the non-superstar who sort of just keeps everybody engaged 
He pats everybody on the back. He's a really good team spirit guy. He's he makes sure there's not friction. Of all the drummers I've ever seen, he has, it seems like the most stamina. Like he never take, t- they play like an hour straight and he never stops. And he's just mm. like relentless, pounding. Rob, like, pounding Rob likes a man who can pound it all night. <laughs> so he's like the Muggsy Bogues of this uh, band. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely really the, short. the point guard of the, of the, of the team. The point card? Point guard. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Lonnie, tell us your band. I've got uh, uh, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder as the lead singer. I have Slash uh, as our guitar player with his hat. I have Matt Freeman, who also likes to wear hats, I believe. No, wait, does he? Sid. Mm, I, I th- not, Can not we give him one? We'll give him one. Sure, you give, we'll him, give him one. Um, uh, and then my drummer is Bill Stevenson, and they're going to do some, uh, <laughs> they are going to do parodies. And they are going to do comedic songs by Weird Al because these guys need a break. Uh, and they want <laughs> things to be fun. just a little bit lighter. I just want to see Eddie Vedder singing a parody of a Pearl Jam song about baloney or something. <laughs> That's great. exactly what he's going to do. I can't think of a name, really, for this band. I know we're going to do that. I feel like I might as well just uh, just go we're for it. So, to that. Oh, Squirrel Jam. To yes. Squirrel Jam. <laughs> okay. right. Sorry. Just be- before we get move on i just want to ask a question like the order we went in was vocalist guitarist drummer bassist lyricist but right. all three of you so far have said you're bassist before your drummer all yeah, three of you on order why? of importance is that gonna... why you all did that rob why'd you do that uh i didn't have a uh, conscious reasoning interesting I feel okay. like on 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 Wikipedia or like Facebook or whatever, it's always listed in this order. So yeah. I just okay. naturally memorized it. Interesting. All right, Darren, introduce tell us your mine. band. I was going to introduce mine in uh, reverse order of famousness, I guess. Okay, do it. But, uh, okay, my guitarist is Anita Strauss. My bassist is Sean Esol of White Zombie Era. Uh, my drummer is Sheila E. Any era. My lyricist is going to be Alicia Keys, and my vocalist and front woman is Lady Gaga. Very nice. All right, and lastly, my band. Uh, on vocals is Dennis Lykson from Refused. It's going to be the uh, Shape of Punk to Come era, which is, I think, like 98, 99 that came out. So it's that era, Dennis Lykson. My guitarist is Tom Morello. We're going to do, like, between, like, self-titled Evil Empire era, Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello. My drummer is Dave Grohl, and I'll do um, In Utero Nirvana, Dave Grohl, for playing, but I'm still getting all of his talents. But the playing-wise, it's going to be In Utero era, since he's a drummer on that. Um, my bassist is Joe Lally, and he's, I, don't, I feel like era doesn't matter for bass, like you could be 90 years old and you're probably playing bass the same way. So just general Joe Lally, and uh, of Fugazi. And my lyricist is Jeff Rosenstock. And I will take present day version Jeff Rosenstock because that's fine by me. And I'm clearly I was going for like a political punk kind of thing with most of my picks. Like Dave Grohl isn't the most political, but I think he'd be on board. Is Dave Grohl going to sing any songs on this album? Yeah, sure. We'll give him a song or two. Definitely backing vocals. He's definitely going to have a mic at the drum kit because he was already like writing songs on the side even when he was in Nirvana. So he had that arrow in his quiver. Yeah, he Even was in then. bands before Nirvana, too. Yeah, but he drummed for those bands for the most part, but still, yes. Uh, so, yeah, that's all the bands. Now let's, uh, we're going to name each of these bands. Who wants to start? Who wants to, I mean, we're going to workshop all these. You you get final say over what your band is called, but we can workshop it and all throw out ideas for each band if we want. So who wants to go first? Who wants to name their band first? All right, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, yeah I didn't does come anybody up with a name have? For my band. I have a name already for my band. If anybody wants to throw out any suggestions, but it's going to take a lot to sway me off of what I have in mind. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, it's a show meme. It's a drop of me that has been played numerous times on the show, and I think it applies. It, it's pretty good. Uh, my band is going to be called the Shitty Angels. Oh, good one. <laughs> I thought you were going to go for murder. No, if it was if if I had more of a hip hop influence, then maybe I would have gone for that. But it's going to be the Shitty Angels. Not good SEO, I, have... I would say, but that's okay. Shitty Angels band, that'll work. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, just because Shitty is in it, 
Oh, um, I, see. I, I choose it's a dollar sign. It's a dollar sign. It's the S. Oh. <laughs> Or maybe one T in shitty just to throw people off. Or maybe off. hitty angels. S H I T T I E. <laughs> or shitty S H E E T Y. How about shiitake angels? Mm. Or S H I D D Y. Because then it's also kind of like your name. City. city. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that one. It's not bad. City. I like city angels. <laughs> I just, I didn't want to go first. But I'll go second. Okay, uh, do it. My band is going to be, have the same name as a great wrestling idea that I had once, which is to do a demolition revival uh, with women. And it would have been Max, oh. and, Max and Crash Femolition. That is fantastic. Uh, Femolition is the name of my band. Two M's or one M? One M. Keep it true to the grammar. Yeah, I can't add on to that. That's really good. So I think we're going to stick with Femolition. Who's next? Rob, you want to go next? Uh, I have no no ideas for this. I imagine it would be just some obscure reference to something like... Maybe, maybe Bong Hit? No. No, they, they're not all potheads. But you are. You're their manager. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'd want to... I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it'd be something corny like the first letter of all of their names. Like M, J, L, M. Who's... That sounds like the word's hammer. You should have picked someone with a vowel initial, Rob. That yeah. Help. Scott Ian, that could have helped you. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have any names. Uh, this was the hardest part. Uh, and... So you lose. Metallica so do you wanna, 2. Is that, the, is that what you're going with? I'm writing oh, it down if you're not going to give me anything else. Uh, but it's T-O-O. I guess so Lars, want, Lars would have a problem with that, so probably not that. That's another reason Wait, to do it. I got. I have an idea for you, Rob. Metallica, but with three L's. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I know that's a joke from somewhere that I'm stealing, and I can't think of what it is. So, if anyone knows that, no, I, I, let's do Metallica right. two. The number two, or how are we? No, I I. Metallica okay. I I. Because it's like put... it's not Metallica, but two. Well, no, because James Hadfield isn't even singing. Yeah. Well, I can't believe you didn't make a weed pun of some kind. No, this isn't a weed band. I'm I'm a weed guy. Okay. Very yeah, surprising. No. Noah, do you have a name for your band? Um, yes, I do. So my band is going to be called Rudimental, and the mental part of it is going to be all capital letters. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, so convicted about it. Wow. <laughs> Love it. Is that, and it, it, came, you... it came to me while I was on the toilet. I was... I, I, <laughs> I couldn't think. I was, a question. Follow up question. <laughs> Did it come to you when you were on the toilet during this process of making a band, or is this a band name you came up with like six months ago? No, it was, it, was okay. it was for this band. It was for this band. I wanted. Really... Okay, so um, the other day, well, yesterday, uh, like in the Haggadah, we were doing our like our Passover Seder. You're doing Haggadahs? Uh, you know, it's fun. <laughs> lucky kosher for this. We were doing a, a ten minute Passover, and you know you have to like dip your finger in the wine for every of the curses, and one of them was hail and fire, and I, I was like, oh, that's really Ooh. cool, and then and then I looked it up, and there's some like weird like Protestant affiliation or Christ. It was too it was it was too religious, so I nixed that idea. And what then, about hail and Hardy? That's already taken. Oh God damn it. I don't know. I just like rudimental. I just think it'll be fun. It sounds like a juggalo ska band that would have played the temple. <laughs> exactly. Even with the way you they have never would have. No, you they wouldn't have come up with the capital letters. You don't think so? No, no. They would have been afforded. Hyphenated. Yeah. No. It's, not, it's just just one word. And like, in the logo, mental goes up a little bit. Yeah, we know. Oh, how about <laughs> alternate name uh, Hagadakin? 
<laughs> like from Street Fighter? <laughs> sure. I'm in Don Dock. All right, Lonnie, your band is up last. Uh, what do you want to name it? Silver Chair. <laughs> I think that's taken. Silver Chair too. Right? How about Top Hats? I was actually hats. thinking uh, of of uh, High Hat and the Footfalls. What is explain? It was uh, four words that I just put together in my mind. Okay. That's H I or H I G H. Lonnie? Is he frozen? frozen. I thought we're workshopping. <laughs> well, I'm asking you how, how. It doesn't seem like anybody's. Yeah. Hi hat and the foot. Well, you'll not. No one will ever write it down. Why so it does, it's it's open to interpretation. I'm gonna Google it. Gotta be like We've got to write it down for when we post this. We don't, we don't have to. They're not going to have the, social uh, media this, pages. We can use the symbol for it instead. But also just theoretically, they need a, they need a website, don't they? Yeah, no, it can be theoretical. Footfalls, two words or one word? <laughs> He's doing that on purpose. <laughs> one word. Okay. <laughs> And I'm I doing H I. Can hold that one. You're Just doing for H-I? brevity's sake, we're doing H I. Hi hat. Hi hyphen hat. I guarantee you that Rob would have picked the other high. Well, yeah, we knew. It's smart. You're gonna you're gonna get a lot of hits from people looking for high hater by bangs. Your boy bangs. <laughs> I, I want to I want to come back around to my name because now that we've been workshopping and, and you mentioned how. My band should be a, a pot reference. I do have a better band name than Metallica too. You know, it's, oh, your second pick is zero. Is, is it Metallica three? <laughs> <laughs> it's Metallica four twenty. Well, it it is Good. it is indeed a pot reference, and it is the most crucial of elements of my uh, habit of oh. marijuana. So my band name is Paperclip. With a K. No. It does sound like, but it is one word. Like, like one superstar word? musicians would have, mm-hmm. like, chosen to be like sort of quirky. Yeah, it sounds like an all-star band name too. I feel. All right, I like it. Did you say with a K? No, no, no. no. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, uh, what about all the people looking for paper clips? I mean, right. Plus, we're working. Yeah, that's not SEO at all. Yeah. You, you put in paperclip band. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a rubber band. I guarantee you something exists that bands paper clips together. <laughs> Whether it's a thing or a person. Let's go back to Metallica too. You're right. <laughs> no. no, we're sticking with paper clip. It's done. It's it, I only erased once. I obsessed with SEO. Pick the least SEO name. <laughs> I guess he figures the star power in the band will bring up their web hits just because it's all these what famous if, people. What if it's P A Y? Pay per clip. I oh. What do you think, Rob? No? He's thinking about it. Mm. Or he didn't no. hear me. He's not thinking. He's just high. No, no, no I think I... Rob Rob is hoping that they are so popular and so over that they become the number one search for paperclip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And outpace actual paper. Yeah, I, I don't I would yeah. And like I feel like spelling it incorrectly would make it more confusing and less SEO. That's my opinion. Mm. So what you always wanted to do with metal injection to beat the molding searches. It is it is above the molding search. Right. right. I'm saying yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. accomplished that. Now you're going on to another exactly. endeavor. Thank you. Yes. You okay. just put it in all caps. No, clip is in all cap. Paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> you're already stealing That's your stealing shit. Shit. <laughs> What idea. Can, can I suggest an umlaut? We could go does in that. Does that work anywhere? No, I just... So one word paperclip. No. What about okay, sh- next. Yeah, Moving on. Changing one of their letters to a numeral, like three. P A P three R. No, no, I hate that. Uh, yeah. Number one instead of the L in clip. This isn't a no, password. Is, the I is going to be an exclamation point. <laughs> I've got this. Old. What is he, pink? <laughs> yes, a pink. Ex- <laughs> it has to be a pink exclamation point. In fact, paperclip, the band refuses to be published to have their name published in any black and white publications must be represented with a pink exclamation point it'll be like panic 
at the disco, I want paper, exclamation point, clip. <laughs> no, no. Uh, maybe that'll be one of the albums. But anyway. So right, I think for this, this next question, I think probably my band and Noah's band are going to be ruled out from the beginning. But the question is, which band do we think is going to be the most commercially successful? Uh, I think, honestly, uh, Rob's. Well, I mean, I, I think, think between Rob, Rob, Lonnie, and my band have immense star power, all of them. Mm-hmm. But I think Rob's is more has more aggregate uh, total star power. I would say yes. Out of those three. Mm, I, I think, think Lady I, Gaga is. I think the I, most have popular the, I have of all of them. I have the single one most popular person. Yeah, like I don't think Alicia Keys is up there too. Yeah, I don't think People Magazine is going to be writing about my paperclip. Yeah. But they will. I love more. Not with that name. (laughs) I think I will have more uh, mainstream appeal and Rob and Lonnie will both have immense uh, rock-centric appeal. Yeah. Most. But Lonnie's going some more of of a vanity project, I feel, like doing Weird Al stuff not that that's a bad thing i think it's wonderful i think that might uh, decrease the uh, mainstream marketability of it. but they will get on every comedy podcast to do an interview mark maron is already waiting <laughs> well but I, they're doing that because weird al is dying so they're oh. all getting together it's like a tribute thing so don't oh. you think they'll get press out of that oh i'm not wishing it <laughs> You I literally created it from scratch scenario. in a thought exercise. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> but just for the financial viability. It's just, it's yeah, a I'm just trying to dispute your points. So that's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You literally we- had created the death of Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Totally unnecessarily. I didn't want it. I didn't want. And you know what? We're gonna fight this. We're gonna fight. This. He's not gone yet. He's not you gone realize yet. You ha- you are writing the scenario. You have the ability to decide. Where yeah, this doesn't have to tonight. be this way at all. He's not. Or even if it is this way, you can decide whether he lives. <laughs> With what the funds that that uh, that high hat. And the footfalls bring in <laughs> because Weird Al lost, lost all of his money. Oh wait, let me stop you there. So you're positing a world where Weird Al got a deadly disease and burned through all of his Weird Al estate, fighting off this disease, and is still ill. You're the one who said it. I'm just. I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to. I'm trying to world build. I'm trying. Yeah, to I know. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fight this for him. Okay, awesome. Can you? I, I want to announce. I want to announce. By the way, Femolition will be donating fifty five percent of proceeds from their, their debut album. That's great. Weird Al's uh, uh, health bills. Any yep. ventilators? He said it over any ventilators. You know, as a musical band, we don't aren't in possession of any ventilators. We're, but. we're going to play a parody song for Femolition that is just the Demolition theme song. Wonderful. Nice. That was going to be the lead single anyway. So, so there you go. Which band do we think is going to be the most critically acclaimed? I think Rob's band. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Sid, Sid, we'll toss up between Sid and Rob because I feel like I feel like uh, more uh, maybe indie centric people will rave over Sid's band. Mm-hmm. I think Rob will be the Rob's band will be the kind that will get a lot of acclaim from like Rolling Stone types. Uh, I, I guess I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be Sid's band. I mean, you have Dave Grohl and Tom Morello, like they they have a lot of contacts. I feel. It's true. I'm keeping my band out of any of my uh, discussions. Well, Jezebel will love your band. Yeah, that's for sure. Is but that what about... Sissel around? Is it? Like, maybe? Yeah. When you say critical acclaim, though, it seems uh-huh. like the like any uh, more serious like music metal critics would love Noah's band. That's also true, yeah. Metal yeah. injection. When you're looking at, it, at like... Uh, uh, you know, more of a mainstream appeal of like cr- people who would even hear about that than maybe, you know, Rob's band. But, um, but I feel like people who really, really care 
it they're going to like my be band. more being Noah's band. I agree with Lonnie. I think Noah also made, and again, like I said with Lonnie, not a not a bad thing, but Noah made a conscious choice to go to people who have a more of a contained sort of um, like a p- people who like a style of music are into that those people. Mm-hmm. And they're going to yeah. be extremely popular in that small circle. It might limit them from being a claim that that's what you know that's not that that's a bad thing at all it's not judgmental but i think that might uh detract from the critical acclaim aspect like from getting hype mainstream circles yes which band do we think would be the best live concert experience if that is ever a thing again i went first last time uh i think my band would (laughs) But I think it just depends on how much of a music nerd you are and what you get out of live performance, what you like to see. Yeah, Personally, I think, I think I'd like to see my band the most. <laughs> well, there's two things in this whole exercise that made me like dying to see this band perform. Uh, one of them is uh, Eddie Vedder singing Weird Al Yankovic songs. Mm. And the other one is, quite frankly, uh, not to kiss my own ass, but seeing Lady Gaga do and 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 Alicia Keys collaborate in uh, hard rock or slightly heavy metal band. Here's the thing, I feel like we won't have a choice but to see your band, Darren, because it's gonna be all over the news. It's gonna be forced mm-hmm. down your throat is what you're saying. Yes, targeted ads on very, Instagram. A very a masculine metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, personally for me, I think mine would be the most fun to see, but that's because I picked it. Mm-hmm. But in general, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go with Darren's. I think that would be the most interesting live experience because it's these huge stars that are used to playing arenas, mm-hmm. but doing a different kind of sound. I think that would be even just the curiosity factor. Yeah, I, I would deal. agree. For me, uh, like obviously, I want to see my band, but the one uh, I would most want to see of the ones you guys made, uh, although they're all uniquely interesting to me uh jaren's is the one that i'm like oh yeah that would be cool to see lady gaga sing rock yeah all right last question i have on my list which band do we think will break up the f- first which one is the one lonnie's you think with band. the most volatile personalities you think lonnie's band oh yeah any better is gonna be like I'm, I'm, okay we get it i can only handle one what? one one album of this how long is is al gonna stay alive <laughs> you tell me you don't want to kill them yeah right What's the no, they, just enough to prove that they will be together longer than one of yours well i also yeah. think like lonnie's band is probably going to be the most expensive to maintain like slash's writer and all that like that's he's money really the second Look axel at... calls and says it's time for a guns and roses store slashes out the door i don't know about that like i feel like eddie vetter seems like relatively down to earth um, so you got Slash, right? Mm-hmm. Weird Al ain't causing no problems. Like, guy could barely move. The other two dudes are just like <laughs> punk rock dudes. Well, he's wait, dying, so wait. Uh, you're saying you're that, right. you're saying that sans, sans deathly illness, he would have been a cancer in the band, is what you're saying. But because what? he's, inca- no, because no, he's no. incapacitated, he can't. That's what you're saying. I'm just giving additional reasons. Oh, I but see. Rob, however, Rob's band, you have uh, more personalities and definitely like people who expect more money we're talking about james hetfield and then uh uh who else do we got who else am i forgetting that's probably gonna be a, that's a giant star Mike but there's Mike. another one less the third one less clay like well less claypool's probably going to be easy because he plays in he i think he just like yeah. kind of you just Mike, Mike on, on and he wanted to be I think in it's metallica more didn't hetfield. he audition for metallica yes wait so then can he have them both in the same band yeah, I thought you said that they it may have recorded. No, you them. said if they once auditioned together. <laughs> I did hear that. Sorry, Rob. I just want to break up Rob's band. But, but but outside of Slash, who's probably going to appreciate playing with these dudes rather than the jerks he normally has to play with, I don't really see these people being a problem. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that the only uh, I mean, I don't actually know the life history of all these people, but the only one that I was aware of that ever got kicked out of a band was in my band. That was Sean getting kicked out of White Zombie. Hmm. Uh, but I, then I thought of Slash. Slash was kicked out of Guns N' Roses, right? In a sense. Yeah, I guess. Was it I mean, he, I, 
I think that was more an axle problem than a yeah. slash problem. Yeah, it certainly was. But I'm yeah. just trying to be yeah. because everyone got kicked out of the band. Pretty much everyone got kicked out. Like it was just Axel and like Buckethead or whatever, but right? Is, so is there anyone else I don't know of that was ever kicked out of their respective bands or any band that was on any of the other bands? Mm. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, no. not that I'm aware of. Yeah. So there's no head cases, really. I would I still think, say it's Rob's band. Yeah, I, I think it is Rob's band because, like, Mike Patton is notoriously difficult. Even when, he, when like, Faith No More's first run, he was always more interested in doing Mr. Bungle stuff, and it was always a problem. He was always butting heads with the other guys in Faith No More. And James Hetfield, I mean, how many tours are they canceling because of his alcohol addiction? Like... That's a problematic. That could split a band. Oh up. well, no, it's okay. This he, I, I want Master of Puppets era James Hetfield, so he's still a full blown alcoholic at that point. He can handle the booze. Yeah. All right, fair. Right, I want to say I don't make the great music. Too. Oh, I think it's this is really similar to doing a sports uh, draft because I think Rob, there's risks. I mean, there's mm-hmm. yeah. you you're you can go extremely pitching heavy and you know pitch get like five great starters or something, but. You know, you're sacrificing offense. So here you're sacrificing possibly the breakup of your band by assembling all these great egotistical musicians together. Right, and yeah. there are, a lot of them are high budget. So my just my budget in general is much much higher. I think. Or potentially huge rewards. Yeah. Yes. All right, and, that's all. Uh, wait, okay. I tried. To... No, uh, but the, uh, you go uh, now. Well, I was going to say with my band, I do see Richard Christie's job on the Howard Stern show uh, as a potential problem, especially if he has to go on tour with my band, uh, just because he has like a, you know, early morning schedule, weekly, you know, like every weekday and stuff. But like, so. is he on the air like all the time for Stern? I haven't listened in so long. I don't know like what exactly his he's role is. not, but he's like involved in like. Um, conceptualizing like bits and stuff like that. So does he, he ever be go real. with his bands? If he I has could... a chance to be in rudimental, do you think he's really going to stay with Howard Stern? Sort of <laughs> yes, thing? Howard Stern pays the bills. I don't think rudimental will pay right away. He's trying to pump you up there. Man. But so... if Howard retires, then yeah, I'm looking for time. I mean, he could tour on the weekends, too. He could do yeah. weekend tours. Mm-hmm. All right, I was I was gonna ask, um, was there any? Because I got some folks. Was there anyone that you were surprised that were not taken or even mentioned? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dave Dave Mustaine. Mustaine. Yeah. How about like um, uh, Jimmy Page? Yeah, I was considering Robert Plant for my vocalist too. Mm. Yeah, or uh, um. Other uh, uh, Sting. Nobody wanted Sting. If this was a wrestling draft <laughs> or a tantric sex draft, the co- I think it just two... it just had to do with like the rest of the band, just kind of like putting people together that kind of yeah. fit. Mm-hmm. I was trying. There to were also, two. Yeah, stick with like. There were two on my list. There were two on my list that I thought somebody would bring up that I was surprised not for bassist Flea. I thought somebody would take Flea. Pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eh. And for lyricist Bob Dylan, he's still alive. He's one of the most famous lyricists in the history of music in general. I he was a, a, I've never <laughs> been an enormous Bob Dylan fan. Uh, and I just think, you know, I mean, I, to me, all right, just to use my band as an example, like my mindset was to pick somebody who was versatile for that slot. It's like mm-hmm. a DH slot. You can. They have other positional eligibility, so I could put them at second base or shortstop. You don't want Bob Dylan singing? I don't want Bob Dylan singing. I don't think he's particularly talented in any other way except he was a poet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good at that. And he's sort of one-dimensional, but great at the one dimension. He was on my list. I thought about him, but I just I wanted someone who spoke more plainly that did like sort of like write in riddles. I just wanted like I wanted a po- an overqualified political punk band. And I thought his lyrics would be interesting, but I want more like direct, like this is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to like mm-hmm. use metaphor and shit. I'm just saying what's going on. I also thought I had of, to... uh, oh, sorry. 
I had a bunch of, like kind of on that. I had a bunch of different things that I was floating around for lyricist, but I just thought the Weird Al one would be more fun. But also, maybe equally uh, amusing to me would have been Taylor Swift. I thought that that would have been <laughs> oh. would have been pretty cool. Um, and then maybe more of like a serious one. Sid would probably get this more, but like a Blake Schwarzenbach. Yeah. For for lyrics, I think would would have been cool. Yeah. But like. Jawbreaker, uh, Jawbreaker. Okay. but like a no, like no, like Eddie Van Halen, no Jimmy Page, no Getty oh, Lee. Yeah, Eddie Van like, Halen, of stuff. course. Yeah, like I yeah. consider yeah. Eddie. Yeah, I thought I thought of that too when I before I decided to go like with an all female band, but like I feel like just Eddie Van Halen is too much of an obvious choice that would lead to less discussion, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just to have fun with it, dig into it. David Lee Roth, I could actually see being more of an interesting choice than Eddie. Yeah, he would fit in your band, Aaron. <laughs> Are you saying he looks like an old lesbian? Is that mean? No, I mean like he always looked like a woman. <laughs> he was a very but now he looks like an old lesbian. Yeah, and before he looked like a young lady. Do you think he's femme? I don't. Know if the, I, uh, yeah. I, I mean, he's very like, masculine, but I think his he wasn't like was Michael. His, like he just Sean had Michael's a lot of women pattern. with him all the time. He wasn't like Brett Michaels, you know. He wasn't wearing like you know, that. Yeah, yeah, but, but he was wearing like tights much... and all that. Look at how much discussion bringing up Eddie Van Halen just started. Yeah, as we as we jumped right over him like a lily pad onto the next <laughs> next person. No, Eddie Van Halen's amazing. Uh, but all right, we should oh, wrap up. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is this was really fun. We hope you enjoyed. Yeah, it. and we have to put our lineups on the Patreon page for people to vote who they'd go see and who would they uh, support. I guess. Yeah, which band you're most excited that. to see. And I think oh. we're going to do a Spotify playlist with a song each from each of our choices, just so people get more of a feel for who and why we selected what we did. And also, uh, we are soliciting suggestions for future type of drafts. That yes. Can, not necessarily music. Anything, anything, literally anything you can come up with. If we like the idea, we will, we will leave it. And here's a suggestion for when we post this. We're gonna obviously we're gonna ask the fans to vote on who they think is the best. But also I'd like to suggest in the comments of the post, pretend you had the sixth pick in every round and you're not able to take anyone we selected, but you're using the same rules. Give us your band. Give oh. us your band name. I like Participate. Yeah. yeah. That'll be Step fun. it up. Uh, and we'd like to thank Lonnie for not hanging out with his kids for an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. So that he could, uh, well, they, one, one came, here to, came here to bring me a drink. So. That sounds nice. What are they, nice. slaves to you? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, all you have I mean, them, right? That's exactly what I was going to say. Also, uh, we're home all day. So I see them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.